Hello everyone. In today's video, we will be covering CIE A-level chemistry, paper 21, May, June 20. The main highlight of this question is part 2b, uh, which is water of crystallization, if I recall correctly. In this year, the candidates did not sit the exam and they were lucky to avoid such a question as I doubt most of you have practiced these types of questions in a while. It hasn't appeared since 2013 or 2014. So let's get to it. So the first part of this question is a balancing question, which can be balanced either by just looking at the question, like looking at the equation, or just doing uh, by balancing it by uh, the redox method or the oxidation number method. Either ways, uh, since it's easy, I'll just be balancing it directly and not involve the oxidation numbers. So uh, the equation shown in 2a describes the reaction which occurs when aqueous potassium iodide is added to aqueous potassium iodide is added to aqueous copper sulfate, right? And because it's added to aqueous copper sulfate, uh, you have to know that the state symbols for copper sulfate is aqueous. And Potassium iodide is also aqueous, right? A white precipitate of copper one iodide forms. So because it's a precipitate, it's a solid, uh, in a brown solution of iodine and potassium sulfate. So since they're in a solution, their states are again aqueous. Okay. And now you have to balance the equation and include the state symbols. Well, the state symbols we've already included because uh, we were just filling as we read along. Uh, but if you're trying to balance the equation, you see that there's one copper, one copper on both sides, and one sulfate, one sulfate on both sides. So we leave this as one, okay? And uh, there's two potassium here, so two potassium. But on the right-hand side, we have three, iod uh, three iodine atoms, one, two, and three, right? So how do you perfectly balance this out? Well, we have one copper, so we just leave that as it is, and we just write a half here. Or you can multiply this entire equation by two if you're interested in writing in half number format, but if you're not interested in writing in half number format, but this would also be accepted as a correct answer. Anyway, let's move on. The table gives the oxidation numbers of iodine in different species in the equation, right? So they use the oxidation number of copper and CuSO4 and CuI. So sulfate is minus two, right? The whole thing. So copper in this would be plus two. Right, so the oxidation number of copper would be plus two here, and oxidation number of copper in CuI is well, CuI iodine is minus one by the redox rules, so copper must be plus one. Okay, so describe the type of reaction shown by equation in A1. Explain your answer in terms of electron transfer. So you see that uh, there's a bit of disproportionation because, no wait, there isn't any disproportionation, it's just redox, right? So the, re the reaction type is redox, and the reason why is because copper undergoes, well, it changes from plus two to minus plus one, so the change is minus one. So copper undergoes reduction, i.e. gains electrons, change in oxidation number from plus two, two, plus one, right? And I undergoes goes oxidation, right? I.e. loses electrons, change in oxidation number from, it changes from minus one to zero. In the reaction described in A1, the student uses 17.4 grams of hydrated copper sulfate. So this is the whole mass. By further titration of the reaction products, the student concludes that the total amount of calcium sulfate, so not calcium, copper sulfate in the sample is 0 0.0982 moles. So the moles of CuSO4 alone, not hydrated, is 0 0.0982 moles. So use the data booklet to complete the table to calculate the value of y, where y is an integer, show you're working. So integer meaning whole number, right? So the mass of uh, just copper sulfate. So n is equal to m by mr, therefore m is equal to n mr, right? Uh, we have moles, 0.0982 times the mr. So copper is 63.5 plus 32.1 of sulfur plus 16 times 4, right? 
and that would turn out to be the mass of just copper sulfate alone is 0 0.092 times 63.5 plus 32.1 plus 16 times 4. The answer is, well, the mass here is given in four significant figures, so we write this answer in four significant figures, 15.67. Okay. The amount of H2O in 17.43 grams of hydrated copper sulfate. So you first find out the change in mass, like between copper and hydrated copper sulfate. So 17.43 minus 15.67. What you got here, this comes here, right? So that 17.43 minus answer, you would get 1.76 grams. Now this is the additional mass due to the hydration, the hydrated salt. Okay, so uh, to find the moles of water, you just do 1.76 divided by the MR of water, so 18, and the answer would turn out to be 0.977. No, so 0.0977 moles 0.0977 right now find the value of y the final value so how would you find out the value of y well it is just the ratio of the moles of h2o and the moles of copper sulfate so y is equal to 0.0977 divided by 0.0982 and your answer will it, it, it won't be exactly one but if you round it in integer form it'll be one so it'll be one right and uh, since other values are given well no because it's an integer you really have to pay attention to significant figures just write one yeah and the reason why we're dividing the ratios is because uh in this thing you just calculate the whole moles of h2o but uh the additional moles is a ratio like the integer like the value of y is a ratio of the molds d to h2 and the molds d to cuso4 so for instance let's say this was twice the value so it'd be what, two times 0.0977 right so let's say if it was 0 0.194 1954 right so in that case this is the total molds of h2o right and if you divide that by the ratio of copper sulfate you'd get two right and that would mean that there's two molds of h2o in this hydrated salt but in this case there's only one mold so what you must remember from this is that whenever you have a, a water of crystallization question to find out the integer value of whichever x y whatever variable they give what you have to do is the moles of h2o the total moles not just the partial moles of h2o divided by the moles of unhydrated salt That's what you have to do. I hope you understood. If you do have any doubts, please leave them in the comment section below and please like the video and subscribe.